Hi, my name is Francine Schlosser and I'm a professor in entrepreneurship at the Odette School of Business at the University of Windsor. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about why academic rigor is really important to having research with practical relevance. So how long have you ever spent at work? How long do you think most people spend at work? We spend at least a third of our day in the workplace doing work. So when you're doing work, you're trying to be productive, you're trying to contribute, and you're trying to have fun and have, you know, a fulfilling experience. And, of course, you probably want to be paid fairly and know that if you work hard, you're going to move ahead. So all of those things are really important as we work in the workplace. And yet, it wasn't until about, I don't know, early in the 20th century that people actually started really researching about how people work in the workplace. You know, you learned how to do a job, but you didn't necessarily learn all of the, the moderating and, you know, controlling factors that would influence how well you did that job or how much you liked that job. And so when you think about the impact on the average person of kind of, you know, investigating all of those good questions, then it makes it really practically relevant to do research. And yet, we go out there sometimes, there are lots of books. You can go to any bookstore and find a ton of books on consulting. Uh, consulting for how to do your job better, how to enjoy your job more, how to motivate other people. And yet, they're written sometimes by people who may have, they might have experience in the workplace, but their experience is still very much surrounding their own views and their own subjective um, understanding of the world. And that's good, especially if we know that they're a great leader and they've been, you know, tried and true and tested. But on the other hand, it's really an, a, an important thing to start thinking about how do we actually translate certain types of understanding and learning to other contexts. And the only way you can do that is if you actually have academic rigor in your research. So we know how big a, a sample size it should be. Should it be, you know, if it's really big, it's going to throw off your results. If it's really small, it's going to throw off your results. So we know how big it should be in order to provide the power that's needed to predict something. We know as academic researchers how to design a longitudinal study and why a cross-sectional study may not be actually the best study to use. We understand context, especially in business. It's really important to understand context because every workplace is different. And so we don't pretend, we don't run experiments with um, people that are outside of a whole lot of different situational factors because we know that those are very limited then in the real world. Instead, in business, best business research will look at a variety of contexts and they will try to um, identify things that can be controlled so that we can actually uh, compare things across context across contexts. We want to be able to compare our results from one context and generalize it into another context. So we do that by controlling for different situations. Other times we do a lot of interviewing and uh, when we interview, again that's practically relevant because we interview the people who are out there doing the jobs and we understand then better about why they're doing it and how they're doing it and how they might improve it. So we can come up with suggestions that way too. So practical relevance is really, really important because if you don't have practical relevance, then people aren't going to actually learn from what your research is about. And your research is going to sit on the shelf and mean nothing. So if you want to change somebody's life tomorrow at work, you're going to have research that's well designed, that's academically rigorous, and that's really practically relevant.